Hello! <laughs> this is the Star Wars BB-9E app-enabled droid powered by Sphero. It's basically a Sphero with a head. Yeah. It's, it's trembling. Do you know why it's trembling? I don't know why. Because we brought the breaching tools. <laughs> I prefer that we're doing this to the evil droid. Yes. Because now I feel like, you know, justice. Justice is served. For those who don't know Sphero, it's a remote control ball that looks like that. That's driven by a little app. This one is Star Wars themed. It has this little hat, which is pretty cool. Yeah. Oh yeah, and if you take the head off, <gasps> LEDs go out. Put the head on. LEDs come on. How's that work, Ted? Induction. Cool. And then I also noticed there's no charging ports on this. How does it charge, Ted? Induction. Cool. <laughs> Sphero is a sphere. Uh, the sphere is covered in some kind of shrink-wrapped glossy exterior paint thing. But really what you're looking at is two ultrasonically welded or chemically bonded, but probably ultrasonically welded hemispheres. We're going to cut them open with a saw. Do you want me to turn this off before you... Uh... Before you cut it open? Oh no. <laughs> no, I think we should leave the patient alive while we do this. BB-90 is an evil droid. That's why we picked the evil one. What do you think he's thinking right now? I don't know. He's a little bit worried. That is so neat. That's Look at that. Cool. We tore this apart. We've got the pieces from the Sphero ball and its charging base. Let's go through them quickly. So you've got the ball, which we split in half. The ball meets the rollers. The rollers rub up on the inside of the ball. They're connected to these motors, and the motors can drive together uh, forward, together backward, or in opposite directions, and by doing that tank tread thing, the ball will pivot, roll forward, roll backward. All of that sits inside this chassis, which has the batteries in it, and it has like the induction coils connected to it, and then this PCB like plugs down on that and makes connections with all of these little plugs. Yeah. So the major science lesson behind this that we're going to explain is in the inductive charging. So you have two pairs of induct inductive chargers. One is in the, in the base of the charging station in the base of the ball. Ba, ba, ba. And then the other pair is in the head of the ball and the detachable head of there. This relates to the monkey. Oh, the monkey. Oh, poor little monkey. The fingerling episode. Yeah. Where we were driving an electro, a coreless electromagnet. To make the eyes. Yeah, sort of move like. up and down. Same principle, but it's used in a different way. What was very different is that with the blinking of the fingerling, right. it was a very, very thin wire, and there was a lot of coils. Right. And this one is a very thick piece of copper wire, allowing a high amount of current and fewer coils. Faraday's law of induction taught yep. us that for a, a metal wire, which is coiled around itself, when you pass a current through it, um, it induces a magnetic field. So then on the other side, you have the receiving coil in the head. I'm going to simplify this sketch, but this would be hooked up to a battery. Let's talk about where else you might find something like this, the Apple Watch uses the same technology. And now your Apple iPhone. It's Qi charging. Qi. Yeah. There's also some disadvantages to the wireless charging. It's not as efficient as plugging into a, a USB jack. You get leaks. You get leaks and you're also losing energy to heat because you've got all this resistance in the coil. The other thing is there's a material mandate to avoid metals you couldn't charge, for example, through a metal housing. So you have to have plastic or glass. In the case of, of the iPhone, that's what required them to have this glass back. One other quick science and physics lesson is antenna design. This is using what? Bluetooth. It's Bluetooth. Got Bluetooth. Right. Bluetooth, much like Wi-Fi, operate at 2.4 gigahertz. And why is that important? Well, we see this antenna here, what we would call a, a whip, whip style antenna. There's a really simple equation that unifies the speed of light, the wavelength, and the physical distance of the wave within the air, which then will drive the length of your antenna. <laughs> so you have the speed of light, which is 300 million, million meters per second. If you divide that by the frequency, in this case, this is 2.4 gigahertz, that's waves per second. You get a wavelength of 0.12 meters. 
So that's 120 millimeters. Unfortunately, that's a little bit too long to fit inside a product. So yeah, that would be like, is... a, you imagine an antenna like this in like every smart device you have. Your, your Apple Watch is like a little, <laughs> and you, peel, you pull it out. It's a little bit too Dick long. Tracy, watch it. But you don't need to include that full length. You can cut it in half or even in, in quarters. And so that's what this is. It's called a quarter wave antenna. So 120 millimeters divided by four. 30 millimeters, which is the length of that wire. And that's, that's the common length you'll find in most electronics. Uh, so when people talk about tuning an antenna, often what you're doing, besides getting the value of the passives right on the board, you're actually you're, you're altering the, the length, length of, the, of the antenna. Cool. So it resonates at the right frequency. So hey, if you liked watching this video, like and subscribe. And, and let us know what to tear down. Yeah, let us know what to tear down. I think we should do wearable next. It's really detailed, it'll be really hard to shoot, but it'll be fun. Um, lots of flex circuits in those, just sort of cool. Bye, bye-bye. <laughs>